Mr. Yeah. Sustainability, you have all of these titles here. Hero <laughs> of the planet. I mean, that's not understated. Father of the circular economy. What is a circular economy? The circular economy is a concept that looks at things instead of take, make, waste, as we have been in a linear economy, that we can take, make, use, retake, reuse, retake, reuse, and so on. So it puts materials into a concept of being actually resources. Nature doesn't have resources, it has sources. And so if we can convert things that we take from the planet into something we can use over and over again and develop the protocols that allow us to do that, we can actually grow the economy while we use things over and over again. And it's a, a critical idea as we go into the future. What gets in the way of that? Because, I mean, recycling has been around for years, but my understanding is that when tensions get high with China, which takes a lot of our plastics recy recycling or did, and then pulls back from that somewhat, that you're dependent on global international relations for this concept of reusing things over and over again. Well, for me, as a designer, it's a design problem because a lot of the things we make haven't been designed to be recycled or the uh, able part is missing. So you can have something recyclable, but if you're not able to recycle it because of infrastructure is not there, for example, then you're not able to really recycle it. So we design things to be recycled, and then we design systems that allow us to recycle it. And then there are other ways we can look at things, too, in a circular economy. There's a hierarchy of sort of intelligent reads involved here. So the first one would be, you know, reduce. Fine. Mm. If I don't need it, why do I have it? You, you can have reuse, then we have more than one use, so things that can become other purpose, and then we have uh, recycle and so on. So there's a hierarchy of waste and a hierarchy of design into that system. Okay, but Americans... And then we also end up with things well, that ahead. are Sorry. heirlooms. Forgive me. Things that you really don't want to throw away. Like what? Uh... I have some things here. We, we do this for a living. This is a brand new sweater from Ralph Lauren. This is heirloom quality cashmere, imagine. Uh, so this is the kind of thing you would even want to pass on. I, I wear my grandfather's gardening coat, and I think of him every time I go gardening. This is that quality of product, for example. But also, Ralph Lauren has designed a take-back system for this. If you ever don't want it, they want it back. This is a high-quality material for the for the uh, biosphere, actually. This is designed to be safe in nature. Same thing here, these jeans, the other end of the cost spectrum, these are only 28 uh, euros, are designed to be totally safe for humans and have been made in factories that purify their water and renewably powered, and it's all done in cost basis that is mass market ready. So it's really about design as the first signal of intention. Like our intention is to make safe, healthy projects in the biosphere, where we live, mm -hmm. and then also put them into a technosphere that knows how to take them, reuse them, and put them back into human utility. Okay, so I'm with you on wearing my grandmother's old things. And the key to grandmothers everywhere is don't crochet an ugly blanket. Give us something beautiful that everybody wants to keep. But that being said, you know, look, in America, we're a consumer economy. And the idea of reducing our consumption is an anathema. For instance, we have more homes, we have more cars. I mean, how many devices do we actually need? But we all have more and more and more. Do you think it's possible to get to sustainable and still be a consumer economy? I think that the point here is really carefully using our words and understanding what they mean. Because how do you consume a TV set, mm. right? Now, basically, people are watching a television right now when they bought our computer. When they bought that, what they wanted to do is watch your show. They didn't want to buy 4,000 chemicals, and some of which are toxic, and just have them on their desk and then throw them away. That wasn't their intention. Their intention was to watch CNBC. OK. So the content of that object is actually your content. 
right? Which is television in this case. So, uh, so that you really don't, you're not buying the thing, you're buying the service it provides you. So we call this product as a service. So something like this, if I can return it to soil and so on, can be a product of consumption because it can go back to nature, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, beautifully. Designed for that even, it's safe enough for that. So that we can call a consumer product. But we also can look at something like this computer and say, that's a service product. I want the service of it. But when I finish with it and its current use, I would like to be to enable to know it's going back into the technical infrastructure to become other useful things without polluting the world. And so that's why we design them for disassembly. We can track all the parts. We can do all these things with these systems, allowing us to do this kind of thing. So you're, you're not really consuming the object. You're consuming the content. And, and so this is a case for design for everything. Even a, a packaging is a, is a thing that is uh, supporting the content but it has its own content. And we used to go into stores and say, I'm buying shampoo. And now you go in and you're buying a bottle of shampoo and you stop and think about that bottle yeah. at the same time. Uh, you know, it's interesting. If you're the hero of the planet, maybe you'll have some big ideas. I'm just back from Las Vegas. I cover casinos and Las Vegas and, and gaming, but I took my children to Las Vegas and to the Grand Canyon and to Hoover Dam, which is, are amazing opportunities to talk a little bit about the crisis at Lake Mead of water. Curious, if I were to propose to you, what if you could take Las Vegas and reduce it to its original desert floor? How would you design it? What, what kind of changes do you think a city like Las Vegas, because it's one that I know well, what would it look like if you put your ideas into function? Oh, the interesting thing is we're actually working on projects like that now. I think the first thing you would do is ask yourself, what are your intentions? And in today's world, is it our intention to destroy the climate? Is it our intention to release carbon dioxide mass amounts? No, our intention is to have a place for people to live and have a, 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 a forthright, abundant life. Uh, that allows us to thrive. So the first thing I would do in a case like Las Vegas is you look at your sources, which would include the Colorado River for water, and then you would think about resources. So if we're gonna take water from the Colorado along with everybody else along it, you know, the Colorado River hasn't reached the ocean in, I don't know, decades. I think it was 2014, it's the last time. So the, the, you would look at that as a source of life, which is water. And then you would think of it, how can I make that a resource over and over again? So you get into water systems that do optimizations, and we can do this with natural systems, even greenhouses that purify water. So you would take the whole approach that you need five goods for the city. You need good materials, and we're looking at new materials made of uh, desert sands, actually oh. concrete, that have never been able to use before because the concrete has to be made with sharp sand, which is beaches and rivers. And uh, so we've now found a way to use the desert sand. And it's beautiful and it's strong and it's, it's new. So we could do cities that collect carbon from the atmosphere while they make the concrete. This is very important because we have to start acting like trees. Trees are sequestering carbon. They are emitting oxygen. And they work with hydrogen through oxidation to get water. So if we think about humans designing a city in a desert, think of it as an oasis. Think of it as a water cycling. Think of it as the materials being uh, associated with carbon capture. Because this idea of coming down to the ground, coming down to Earth, is important. The planet was a dead rock in space with a little bit of water on it. it looked like Venus. And then all of a sudden, we get biology. And we get humus. And the word human comes from the word uh, humus. So if we think about that, the carbon wants to come down. We have to get the carbon down out of the atmosphere. And what we've been doing is the opposite. We take dead rocks from the geosphere and, and carboniferous rocks. We burn them to make concrete by burning other rocks like limestone. And then it all goes up into the atmosphere. That's the opposite of the way nature works. Mm -hmm. Nature brings the carbon down. It emits oxygen. And the water is cycling and purifying by a tree. 
So let's think about uh, Las Vegas like a forest. It's hard to imagine, but you'd think of it as an organism like an oasis with materials that are flowing in and out of it for everybody's prosperity. So, and that way you would look at, the, at Lake Mead, which is now drying up too, and all the people along it being able to share it and still let it go to the ocean because we'd be intentionally designing it so we're optimizing the use of water for the benefit of all species, actually. Thank you.